afternoon to D's, or good evening, whenever you happen to be listening to this. Uh, our topic is still systems of equations, and our goal, I know how to solve a system of equations by the method of elimination. Uh, so we're going to learn a new method of solving when substitution just doesn't work really well. Uh, we're going to solve this first uh, question here by substitution, um, but there are no variables that don't have a coefficient. So it means it's going to get messy. We're going to see some fractions here. And um, we're going to see just how messy it's going to get and see if we want to maybe find a better way to do it. So taking a look at this one, I'm going to get x by itself in the first equation. You don't have to start that way. You could get x or y by itself in any of the equations, but that's just the way I'm going to choose to start. So I'm going to take equation number 1, and I'm going to rearrange it to get x by itself. 3x plus 2y equals 19. I'm going to uh, subtract 2y on both sides, which gives me 3x equals 19 minus 2y. And then divide both sides by 3. So x equals 19 minus 2y over 3. As you can see, we've already got a bit of a mess. I'm going to call that my equation 3. And I'm going to sub that equation 3 back into the equation I did not use in the first place. So that is equation 2. So I need to say sub 3 into equation 2. And I'm going to rewrite equation 2, except instead of an x, I'm going to put that 19 minus 2y over 3, this nasty little fraction here. And then I still need to subtract 2y, and it still equals 5. Now, we know how to get rid of fractions. If we just multiply both sides by the uh, same thing um, that is going to, that 3 will go into. So any multiple of 3 will work, but uh, since uh, we want to keep numbers small, we're going to just use 3. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3. And that's going to cancel that 3 out there. And so the only thing that goes through that bracket here then is the 5. So I'm going to do 5 times 19 is 95. Minus 10y. And then I'm going to have minus 6y. And that's going to equal 15. Putting my y's together, this gives me 95 minus 16y, and that equals 15. Subtracting 95 on both sides, I get minus 16y equals 80, negative 80. And dividing both sides by negative 16 gives me a y that is equal to 5. So we got a nice answer with all that messy uh, equation. Uh, and we still have to figure out what y is, so I'm going to sub, uh, or sorry, figure out what x is. So I'm going to sub y in equation 3 which says x equals 19 minus 2 times y, uh, which we found out to be a 5. So I'm going to put the 5 in there, uh, divided by 3. So 19 minus 10 is 9 over 3, which is 3. So therefore, our solution is 3 comma 5. If I were to graph those equations, that would be where they cross. Those are the two uh, number, the value of x and the value of y that will make both equations true. Now, that was pretty messy. So it would be nice if we could figure out some way um, to, that we didn't have to do that. Uh, so we're going to take a look at another property of equations. And I'm going to start out with a simple equation to de demonstrate the additive property. Something so simple uh, that you probably think it's pretty silly of me to even mention it. Uh, something like 3 plus 1 equals 4. Um, that's my first equation. We're going to call that equation 1. Then I'm going to use one that's still pretty simple, but not quite as simple. Negative 5 plus 10. And that's going to equal positive 5. Now, to demonstrate the additive property, I'm going to add these two equations together, number for number. So 3 plus negative 5 gives me negative 2. Uh, 1 plus 10 gives me 11. And 4 plus 5 gives me 9. And I want you to look at that and see that that is actually a third equation that is no less true. Negative 2 plus 11 is 9. So when I add two equations together, equation 1 and equation 2, when I add them together, I get a third equation that is also true. Uh, same thing goes for the subtractive property. If I take 3 plus 1 equals 4, an equation that's rather trivial but no less true, uh, negative 5 plus 10 equals positive 5 is our second equation. If I, instead of adding, I now subtract them, I take 1 and subtract equation 2, 
Um, 3 subtract negative 5. Watch your negatives there. 3 subtract negative 5 is positive 8. 1 subtract 10 is negative 9. And 4 subtract 5 is negative 1. And again, when I subtract two equations, I get a third equation. That is also true. Okay. So, knowing that I can add and subtract equations to get a third equation that's true, take a look at this. Wouldn't it be nice if I could add or subtract these two equations and one of my variables will just vanish? Because I know how to solve things in one variable, it's the second variable that bugs me. And with substitution, we got rid of it by making a substitution. Uh, but we saw that it was pretty messy with a uh, question like this. Um, so the first thing that I want you to notice is that, yeah, we can actually do that. If I add these two equations together, those two y's will just go to zero because I've got plus 2y and minus 2y, and when I put them together, poof, they're gone. So that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to add equation 1 and equation 2, add them together. And when I do that, I get 8x, the y's are gone, and then I have 24. When I divide both sides by 8 to isolate x, I get x equals 3. Now that I know what x is, I need to figure out what y is, and I'm going to say sub x in. Uh, and I like equation 1 because it doesn't have any negatives. Um, so 3 times 3 plus 2 times y equals 19. Uh, this is 9, so I'm going to subtract 9 on both sides, and I get 2y equals 10, and y equals 5. So now I have the solution here. The solution to our equation is 3, 5. And look at how much little work it took um, compared to this, because that was exactly the same question. So there's the question with substitution, and here is the question with elimination. So you can see elimination is a much more efficient method um, if you can use it. So looking at the next question, it says um, the key to solving by elimination is you need one of the variables to have the same coefficient in each equation. Don't worry about the sign of them as long as the numeral part is the same. So for example, number one, we're going to solve these by either adding or subtracting. And so I've got these two questions here. And if you feel comfortable enough, I would pause the video and try and do them yourself and then come back and see if you got the right answer. Uh, here's my question one, equation one and equation two. I actually have a choice in this one because both the x's and the y's have the same number in front of them. They both have ones in front of them. Um, but notice that the y's actually have different signs with them and the x's are both positive. They're the same. Um, so if I add, I'm going to get rid of the y's and if I subtract I'm going to get rid of the x's uh, so we have a bit of a choice there so I'm actually going to add if given a choice I usually like to add I make fewer mistakes when I'm adding so when I add those two equations together the y's disappear and I have 2x equals 4 which means that x must equal 2 now that I have x I need to find y so I'll say sub x in, and it doesn't matter where we put it, equation 1 or equation 2, I'm going to choose equation 1. Uh, 2 plus y equals 1. Subtract 2 on both sides, y equals negative 1. So our solution is 2, negative 1. Now in the second question, I don't have a choice here. The x's are the only thing that has the same number in front of them, and they have a 1 in front of them. And so since they have the same number in front of them and they are both positive, to make them go away, I have to subtract. So since I have two of the same signs here, I have to subtract. So I'm going to take equation one and subtract equation two. When I do that, the x's go poof, and the y's, I'm left with two of those, two y. On the other side of the equal sign, I have one. Take away three gives me negative two, and if I divide both sides by two, I get y equals negative one. Finding the next one, I'm going to sub y in, it doesn't matter, equation 1 or equation 2. I'm going to pick equation 1 for no particular reason. Uh, x plus 5 times negative 1 equals 1. Um, this is going to be negative 5, so I add 5 on both sides, and I get x equals 6. So therefore, my answer is 6, negative 1. 
Now, moving right along, this has been great when I have two equations that have the same number in front of them. But what happens if I don't have the same number in front, like in this one? The x's have a 2 and a 6, and the y's have a 5 and a 2. Well, um, what we're going to do, and you can see up there, it says if there isn't a variable that matches, see if you can multiply one equation to force a variable to match. So the easiest thing I can think of is I can force this one to say 6 if I multiply it by 3. But remember, if I multiply that by 3, I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to force that x to say 6 in front of it by multiplying equation 1 by 3. So I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to multiply it by 3, which forces a 6x here. But it also changes this to 15y, and that's going to equal negative 42. Uh, I don't have to do anything to equation 2. This one I'm going to call equation 3. Equation 2 already has a 6x there, so that's great. Plus 2y equals 6. And that's my equation 2. I'm just going to write it down again so that they're side by side. And now to get rid of the 6x and the 6x, they have the same sign in front of them. They're both positive, so to get rid of them, I have to subtract. So equation 3, subtract 2. Uh, my x's go away, and I'm left with 13y equals negative 48. And now to get y by itself, I divide both sides by 13, and I get y equals negative 48 over 13, which is not pretty, but it's an answer. And now we have to find out what the x value is, and we can put it into either equation 1, equation 2, or equation 3. I wouldn't suggest equation 3 because we made those numbers bigger than they had to be. So I'm going to say sub y in, and I kind of like equation 2 because it doesn't have any negatives. And so I'm going to say 6x plus 2 times y in this case is negative 48 over 13. And that has to equal 6. Well, I do not like um, that 13 there. I don't like it at all. Um, we need to get rid of denominators. Um, so I'm going to say that this is 6x minus 96 over 13. And that equals 6. And then I'm going to multiply through by 13 so that I get rid of that 13 there. So if I multiply through by 13, I get 78x minus 96, and that's going to equal 78. Add 96 on both sides, and I get 78x equals 174. And then I divide both sides by 78, I get x equals 174 divided by 78. That actually reduces to lowest terms. It is actually 29 over 13 when I reduce it to lowest terms. So now my answer, therefore my solution is 29 over 13, comma negative 48 over 13. And that's a nasty fraction, but it's still an answer. Now, our last example, we're going to solve by first multiplying both equations to make the coefficient be the same. Uh, look at each variable and determine the lowest common multiple of the coefficients and decide which one you like better. That's up to you. And multiply each equation to get that number as your matching coefficient. So I'm going to take this as equation 1 and this is equation 2. And I'm going to take a look. The lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So I can force the a's to have a coefficient of 6. And the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6, so I can force the b's to have a coefficient of 6. Uh, it doesn't matter which. I usually like to add the equations to get rid of stuff. So if I force the b's to have the same number in front of them, uh, they have opposite signs, so I can add to get rid of them. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to force the b's to say 6. So, what do I have to multiply equation 1 to get a 6 in front of the b? Well, that would be a 2. So, I take 2 and I multiply equation 1, and I get 4a plus 6b, and that equals 22. And that is equation 3. Now, I still need a 6 in front of the b in equation 2, so equation 2 needs to get multiplied by 3, so that that will say 6. So, when I multiply by 3, I get 9a minus 6b equals 16 times 3 
is 48, negative 48, and that's my equation 4. Now to get rid of the 6s, the 6b's, I add the two equations together, so I take equation 3 and I add equation 4. And when I take equation 3 and I add equation 4, I get 13a and 22 plus negative 48 is negative 26. And divide both by 13 and I get a equals negative 2. Now to get our b, we're going to sub a in. And it doesn't matter where we go in. Again, I, I'm kind of fond of positive numbers. So I'm going to go back into equation 1. You can put it in 1, 2, 3, or 4. I'd stay away from 3 and 4 because the numbers are bigger than they have to be. So 2 times a, which we know to be negative 2, plus 3 times b has to equal 11. So that gives me negative 4 plus 3b equals 11. Add 4 on both sides and I get 3b equals 15. Divide both sides by 3 and I get b equals 5. So my solution is a equals 2 and b equals 5. Now just one more thing that you have on the bottom of your handout that says, notice once you have the same number in front of a variable, if they have signs that are the same, you will subtract the two equations. If they are different, you will add the two equations. And that concludes our lesson for today.